Hi everybody, I have another botany lesson to share with you today. We are working through our live education main lesson book for botany. This is for fifth grade. You can find more information about this curriculum in the description box below. And today we are working with mosses. So in the curriculum, it suggests an activity and that is to look at mosses and try to pull them apart individually so that you can get a better idea of how they are individually and how they work as a community. So I have have these uh, mosses and I think there's even some lichen in here and this is just a decorative pack that I picked up from home goods and I think that you could probably fi find it at craft stores and other places and it worked really great for this lesson here and I've pulled apart one of these mosses here so that I can show my son what it looks like individually as well as how it works together as a community because this is an important part of this particular lesson. So this one came with a nice variety of things. We looked through them as well as looking through this DK eyewitness book on plants, we found some more information in here in order to supplement what the curriculum already had. So now it's time for us to draw our mosses and also write our narration about it. And I want you to take a listen at how I'm explaining to my son how we're going to draw this. Now we're used to doing our um, trees on this side, but today let's do our tree on this side. Okay, and then all of this will be moss or what we can do is we can kind of make it look like a valley like this like like a how would I make it look like a valley and these are all on the trees uh, on the the you mosses do it, you do it like so like, like this, this would be up and then hmm. down here then up then make the valley come this way and then make a river or make a river coming down okay what if then a river, river in the middle? What if a river went like this and then this is all the moss and then this is the tree? Let's do like this being or we make the river go right in front and then the tree is over here. Let's make the so the, the river, river goes. goes here and then this is going to be all the moss, all the moss. And then we're going to have a, the tree go like this. This is a redwood, so it's going to go just all the way up. Because I did not make a sample for this particular main lesson, I'm going to work through it together. Probably wouldn't be, um, yeah. there probably wouldn't be a, a river quite that close. Should we erase our river? Let's erase our river and just make um, green moss everywhere. No river? Yeah. And the moss is, I'm going to draw it up like this so that when we put our, um, it's gonna look like branches, sort of, so that when we, I shouldn't have done the tops like this. So in the end, I was trying to explain that if we draw the mosses in branch-like formation, then when we put our watercolor over it, we'll be able to see some of the definition. Otherwise, it's gonna look like a big green blob, which actually it kind of ends up looking that way anyway. And just for some color, we decide to add a couple of mushrooms here. This is optional to the lesson, of course, but since we had studied mushrooms earlier on in this unit, I thought it was appropriate to revisit that as well. So we're going to be using our Distress inks for watercolor. I can't tell you how much I enjoy this range of colors and the quality of the Distress inks as watercolors. We're really enjoying them quite a bit. And so we're just going to squish them onto a non-porous surface and then use some water and a very thin paintbrush. And that's it. It works really well. Now for our tree on the side there, we're using quite a variety of browns in order to get that nice variation of color. And for all of the different colors that we use for this project, you can check the description box below as well as information on where you can find them. So we're going to finish drawing, or rather coloring in the tree, and then we're going to work on the moss. It was kind of hard to do. My son is trying to make it kind of branch-like. It's not working as well as we thought. Of course, in nature, it's just going to look all green anyway. Now, we're just going to watercolor in those mushrooms, and because you can't see a lot of definition, you can't see the white, we're going to come back in with some fine liners. I'm using a 0.5 and a 0.75 liner. We're just going to go back in and define those mushrooms a little bit and then to put the white dots we're going to use some white out and this is something you can find even at the dollar store and this is going to give some nice detail to the mushrooms and I kind of like the way that white really pops against the red and it really kind of defines those mushrooms. 
The last thing I need to do for this lesson is to have him do his written narration. I'm going to go ahead and put lines so that it's a little easier for him to write. And oh, there's one more thing we have to do actually, and that's to give it a border. And this is a very typical thing in the Waldorf philosophy is to border your pages with some color and it just kind of brings everything together. It has a, a deeper meaning as well. And once that was dry, then we could move on to the nar narration part of this lesson. For this one, we decided to go back into the book and use one of the suggestions for this lesson, and that is a dictation exercise. So for this dictation exercise, I recited the passage aloud and he wrote it on a piece of paper first, and then he checked his grammar and punctuation and spelling, and then he went ahead and rewrote it onto his final paper. And then I went ahead and just did a, a summary on my own since I am working alongside with him for all of these main lessons. So if you want to see the complete playlist for all the videos in our Botany main lesson block, you can tap on the screen right now. And if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.